And there. Whoa, right. Okay. Hi. Hello. Better. Oh no, my sound is up on Mark's computer so I can hear myself. <laughs> Welcome in. Happy Thursday, everyone. I hope everyone is uh, having a good week at work, having a nice Thursday. I hope everyone is off work and relaxing. Hi, Teo. Hi, Taylor. Hi, Axel. Hi, husband. Hi, Max. I am just squeezing myself some limes over here. <laughs> yes. What else did I get in my drink? Squeezing. Hold on, let me squeeze this lime the proper way. <laughs> there must be an easier way. Anyway, again, happy Thursday. Welcome to the kitchen. It is time for Quakes Bakes, or also known as it's good enough to eat. We've got dinner in the oven. <laughs> and I will show you how we made it, or at least how we finished it, uh, right now, actually. As soon as I stop spilling drinks on myself. I do like squeezing my citrus by hand when it's only one, but it does get all over your hands. But no cuts, so we're good. <laughs> and there we go. Um, I need to clear off some of this. This is our pizza sauce, our spicy bits. Hmm? All you're getting is the bowl. And when Mark says all he's getting, he means it's like taking up 5% of the screen and therefore all of his attention. But uh, let's get going. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, for those of you who haven't seen him yet, that is Quake. That's me. That's Quake. That is uh, my persona. And he is a saber tooth who is in the kitchen. So, uh, enjoy. Well met, everyone. Okay. So I pre-sliced up some bacon for the second pizza, and I'm going to get this in a pan to pre-cook, because I want it crispy, and if we try to cook it with the pizza, crispification will not happen. And also I wanted to get the, <laughs> the meat part out of the way before I started doing anything else. Oop. Just dropping shit all over the place. Okay. And because I've never had a chance to do it when all in all this time we've been making pizza, I'm finally doing it. I finally got my act together, remembered we were making pizza, and have the ingredients for a proper Hawaiian pizza. Because, I mean, I love it. And I want to eat it. I won't need this whole pineapple, so maybe I'll just do half of it for this, and then I'll figure out something to do with the rest. Mark is suggesting pineapple granita. And y'all watched me do trim up a pineapple last week, so don't really need to go too much detail, but I am just trimming off the skin.
which I will put somewhere. It's fine, that is the garbage bowl today. It is not compost, because that is not going to break down. Uh, and then I'm going to just <laughs> be careful, because dull knife leads to cuts. Trim out the core. And I want to make nice pizza size chunks. Things that I'm going to want to eat with my hands. Ah, not for me. I have a friend who really likes eating, like, kind of the pith of a watermelon. I'm kind of like that, but with the core of the pineapple. It's tough and chewy, but I kind of like it. Let's get a bowl for that. And the other thing I'm going to put on... So there's a restaurant I could, I didn't buy any macadamia nuts, but there's a restaurant I used to go to as a kid a lot, and they had an Islander pizza, as they called it, which was Canadian bacon and pineapple and macadamia nuts. Uh, I'm not going that route today. We get nice crispy bread crust with our pizza. So instead, I'm going to spice it up and put on some uh, pickled jalapenos. Early age fruit, uh, oh, okay. So eating the pith of those fruits was, that's interesting, okay. Well, I hope I never serve you the, the pith of any fruit, because I don't want to trigger any of that. And then the, uh, Pickled jalapenos are already ready to go, as long as I can find them, because I know they're in here. There they are. There we go. Okay. Although I do need to tend to my bacon. And of course, you don't have to cook it all the way, all the way through, because it is going to go in a 450 degree oven. For 25 minutes, so it will get fully cooked if it's not quite. Nope, can't lose any. Can't lose any bacon. Russia's broken. If this pig gets its life, then I will not waste it. Okay. So simple as that. That part's done. And I can move on to cake. So I've already made a couple to get out of the way, but I will go through making the second one, or the third one, the third layer. I don't know how much cake I'm going to need, so I'm going to have three cakes, because that's how many beets I had. And if I don't need it all, I don't need it all. And I need to figure out something else to do with a bunch of cake. And at that point, maybe I make cake pops and take them to the office. I don't know. We'll see. But I have plenty. I will have plenty. So I don't have to worry about it. Especially because I was like watching a baking show earlier today. And one woman was baking and she ran out of... Um, something. She ran out of her ganache. I'm like, how do you run out of ganache? It's so easy and quick to make. Like, it's two ingredients. Honestly, she should have been the one who went home, but she didn't. So whatever. I'm not the judge. <laughs> I should be the judge. I feel like I'd be a better judge. I mean, everyone, everyone who's not a judge feels like they'd be a better judge than the person on TV. I should just I should just stop it there. <laughs> okay. So. So, right, there's a story behind this cake which I should tell. 
So my good internet friend Rod, uh, Rod Shark, uh, had, had a stream just chatting the other day where they talked about um, an, a YouTuber who does all these wild recipes that take hours upon hours upon hours. It was, what, 48-hour chocolate chip cookies, 100-hour lasagna, wild things. So in his honor, tonight, I am making the 69-hour slumber cake, uh, which is going to be, hopefully, shaped into a shark. And so the 69 hours, Monday, I roasted beets. Yesterday, I made, or Tuesday, I made plum jam. And yesterday, I baked the first two layers of cake. And today, we're going to put it all together. So it is my 69-hour slumber cake. <laughs> right? No, it's not because they baked for 48 hours. Honestly, it was an exercise in self-control because he made the, uh, the dough and portioned it out, and then covered it to sit for two for two days overnight. And who wants to wait that long to have cookies? Honestly, the the the, uh, the video says, oh, it helps the flavors fully develop and merge, meld, and everything. And I can get behind that for certain things like slow roasting some meat or aging some meat or like cooking a soup broth, a stock. Getting that nice and concentrated, that can take days, especially if it's like, if it's big amounts. But for cookies, I don't know. I don't think two days is worth it enough for me. It's both, band geeks. We are, uh, there's a pizza in the oven, and I am moving on to, I'm making the cake right now. Um, this is like very prominent in my viewfinder. So I'm going to move that right now. need to find a place for it, honestly. So I'm over here. I'm just running out of counter space very quickly. Just going to set it up right here for now. Goodness, I cannot wait to remodel this place. So anyway, beets were roasted on Monday. And I've got some beets in here. I'm cooking up bacon for the pizza. I'm do Yeah, I'm doing everything all at once. And of course, I keep getting distracted and walking back and forth. And oh, that's where I could have put my... That's where I could put my cutting board where it is not in the way and it's not going to fall over and on the ground and shatter into a million wood shards. That would be a whole thing. So anyway, I'm going to put my wet ingredients in here and blend them all up to get them ready. So I've got... Let's prep my pan. I've got a nine inch pan. I've got... A round of parchment, which I love, and I will spray my pan, and then put the parchment down on so it sticks, and then spray over it. And there's my pan, all ready to go. Easy as cake. <laughs> um, so I also need buttermilk and so I don't when can you come over you are always welcome I am happy to feed any visitors honestly you're doing me a favor by eating all the food so I do not do it and this is going to be like a, a full on cake so <laughs> don't ask what's going to happen to it because I don't know But I've got some milk, which I will put down in there. Should be buttermilk. I don't have any buttermilk, but I will add some extra acid 
to make up for that. I've also got a whole lemon to juice down in. Yes, please, Teo. <laughs> As you can see, Mark is very excited for pizza. We haven't had it in a while. I did not call you a slacker. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get some vinegar to throw down in there too, just to help really acidify things. If I can find where Mark doesn't like where I stick the vinegar in the cupboard. There we go. Nice and tart. It's gonna activate all of our ingredients and of course help it not taste like beets because our beets are for the color mainly. A little bit of structure. And they're kind of naturally sweet. So honestly, better in a cake than you would think. I also need to get more vanilla because this is just about out. Milk, juice, vinegar, and vanilla. Okay. And this will help once I once I get this all chopped. I can put the blender away, and that's one thing off the counter, which is helpful. Oh my goodness, I was watching someone's stream a couple of days ago, and she just had this massive space in which to work. She had a camera that tracked her as she walked around, big all overhead view. She had, a, as I commented on her stream, she had enough counter space that she could share it with the cat, because the cat was up on the other side of the counter. <laughs> and even had a food dish there, and she still had plenty of space that was cat free to work in. So, a little jealous, but okay. There's my bacon. My bacon is done. Ready to go. Yes, he, Mark came in to check on the pizza. Yeah, I know, I still wouldn't let the cats on the counter, but, I mean, honestly, if they wanted to be there, and I had, well, I mean, one, if your cat really wants to be on the counter, they're going to be on the counter. So, at some point, it's easier just to live with it. I mean, less so now that we're working from home because of the pandemic, because we can see what the cat's up to most of the day. Um... Yes, because I go to bed, and then Mark stays up for a while, and then by the time Mark goes to bed, then I'm almost getting up. Yes, please get hungry. Please go and cook things, and then eat them, and tell me how they are. I love it. This recipe is straight off of New York Times, which I can share for beet red velvet. So now that I have the beet part ready, I do the rest of the normal cake stuff. So, I need to figure out how much butter to use, honestly. Butter is nice and soft though, ready to go. Got it out of the fridge during lunch. I'm just going to give that a whisk, get it broken up, and 
and pour in my sugar. And I finally took the opportunity to use up the rest of some coconut sugar. Up here. So that is a bag out of my cupboard. And I'm just creaming, creaming, creaming sugar and butter. And of course, feel free to use a mixer, but I would not be paying proper homage to Quake if I did not lean over, make a face, and whisk away. Got eggs too. And of course, I need to compensate a little because this recipe called for three eggs <laughs> and I'm doing a half recipe right now and it's hard to do half an egg. So I'll make an adjustments. I will make an adjustments. I will make adjustments to get it to the proper consistency. This was two. So I've got, well, so the full recipe is three quarters of a cup of butter, a cup and a three quarters of sugar, three eggs, and then two cups of flour becomes one cup. I'm going to keep that on standby in case I need to add some more if it's too liquidy. And then all of our leavening. So this is a chocolate cake. So I will be putting, well, red velvet is traditionally chocolate flavored. But I never think there's quite enough chocolate to make it taste chocolatey. So I'm not going to reduce the amount for the half recipe. It says three tablespoons. I'm going to put in the full three kind of heaping tablespoons. That chocolate isn't providing any texture. Or not really. So I'm not going to worry about it. And then my baking soda. Bacon powder. and salt. It'll be fine. And just whisk to break up the clumps of cocoa. I'm going to add a little Dolby yogurt just because I like it. That was a husband butt in the way. That's okay. And there's our pizza out of the oven, which means it's almost time to rebuild the next pizza. much cheese? I don't know. He's saying things about the pizza, but I don't know what they are. <laughs> I 
<laughs> it is a pizza cake. A cake pizza. I'm not going to try to combine those words because it sounds like it would come out not good. Also, hello, Robo. Thank you for those shoutouts, Robo. We do have some lovely, lovely streamers in our chat today. Check out Bo for some intense Final Fantasy XIV raiding action. And check out Terribly Jane for some spoopy games. Okay. What am I doing? Is that everything? That's everything. I think. Yes. Okay, we're good. We're good! So I'm just going to add in batches my wet and my dry and of course it's already <laughs> with the beat nice and vibrant and don't worry if it starts looking a little bit like curdly as the <laughs> milk and the vinegar kind of react it'll be fine as you whisk in your dry ingredients it'll all come together and look nice and smooth. Did you need help, Mark? What? Did you need help? Uh, Is that a yes? Hmm? It's sticking a lot today. Make sure you're not wearing anything that you mind being stained red, because <laughs> if you get that beet juice on it, it will probably not come back. go. There's our cake batter all ready to go. Mark has major problems, he says. I don't know what he's going to do about them. But I'm just over here making a cake. Okay, let me go assist with a cake, because he loves using this tool that is floppy, which does not work at all, because it's floppy. He needs a more sturdy utensil. Yeah, I know. That's what I keep telling you. It's a fun spatula, but a floppy spatula, not great for getting pizza out of a tray. I need to get the cake in the oven, and then I will decor I'll decorate. <laughs> Top the other pizza. <laughs> Mark loves his Mickey spatula. It's just not the right tool, which I tell him all the time. But the Mickey. The one you were just using. Wait, what? How did you hear Star Wars from Mickey? A Wookiee. I see. Right there. Do 
just spread it out a little bit. It should do it kind of thing. You can also just give it a little tap tap. And it spreads right out. So that's going to go in as soon as the oven is preheated. And it cooks pretty quick. I'm not eating right now. I'm kind of in the middle of things. But we can now top our other pizza. Just pop the little bubble. So, this is a overnight, I guess it's the theme of long, long bakes, because this is an overnight 36 hour pizza dough. And it's Detroit style. So, well, yes, if you, do, if you, have, your, if you have your starter on the counter, it'll rise faster. Um, but if you have your starter in the fridge, so you don't have to be so good about maintaining it. It's right there. Tilt down. There's the pizza. So you give it a good covering of cheese first. It is nice thick pizza. It's like focaccia style. How you doing, Joey? <laughs> yes, he was he was holding that right there in the danger zone. But honestly, if it had fallen, it would have been my fault because I'm the one that tipped it forward so the camera would get it. So next is sauce. And you don't do too, too much sauce. Just kind of a couple lines of it. Got some. Chili. And I'm using this for spice because the jalapenos themselves aren't going to be very spicy. Because they're pickled and they're a little bit sweet, actually. So, we're still going to use our hot chili sauce. We're going to stick our cake in the oven, now that it's heated up. Yeah, because it's a small space. I love my toaster oven so much. Oh, thank you for the bonk. My goodness. Highway to the bonk. <laughs> thank you, Robo, so much for your work on my commands. And then for distracting me. Who distracted me? Mark distracted me. Of course it was Mark. Okay. So I'm going to use a slotted spoon to put my bacon on so I don't get all the grease. Only get some of the grease. And see, I pulled out six strips of bacon thinking it would be enough. And Mark's like, do you really think that's enough for an entire pizza? So I pulled out two more and now it's like a lot of bacon. Suppose we will survive somehow. Okay. You can't eat it, you know, I just put it all on the pizza. What? 
Apparently, he's not concerned with too much pineapple, though. So I will be sparing with my pineapple. I'm not going to put this whole thing on. Thought I was going to put the whole bowl on? Jeez. All right. Okay. I'm getting all this peanut gallery over here. I think we're good. I heard you, my goodness. <laughs> my goodness. Okay. And then our nice, lovely, hot and sweet pickled jalapenos. Of course, as always, when making your own pizza at home, put on the ingredients you like people like bacon and pineapple and jalapeno pizza, let them eat it. And just, just get different pizza for yourself. Simple as that. There we go. So jiggly as it moves around. Okay, the pizza in. Now we can turn ourselves to making frosting. Because we cannot make a cake without frosting. Because who wants to just eat a bunch of cake? I mean, some people I'm sure, but that's not what, he, that's not what we're here for. I'm going to make cream cheese frosting because it's somewhat true. I was going to use the mixer bowl, but Mark never washed it after making the bread dough. So I guess I'm washing a mixer bowl. Ah, it's so dirty. Okay, you know what? No. Let's do it by hand. Let's just do it by hand. Like a good, like a good kitty. Okay. <laughs> Why have oversized bowls if you never use them? Again, nice soft butter and cream cheese. And for my cream cheese frosting, I like to do standard, well, I shouldn't say standard because depending on where in the world you are, you probably have different sizes of butter sticks. So many toppings. Three toppings. Okay. So four half cup sticks of butter. Nice and soft, so it takes very little time to get going. And then also four eight ounce packages of cream cheese. <laughs> you can hear the whisking. Did you mean the whisking, like the whisk against the bowl or the slurping of the butter? <laughs> I do not want to miss out on any of this cream cheese. 
because whatever cream cheese icing I do not use on this cake, I can certainly use for, like if I make cake pops, or cinnamon rolls, or anything, more of the thwapping. Here for the thwap. Okay. Okay, you know what? Let's uh, break up this cream cheese as we go. And not try to work in <laughs> four blocks of cream cheese all at once. Worked for the butter, but cream cheese is a little sturdier than butter. how forgiving this frosting is. Like, you can really mess with it. Mess with the proportions and come up with a good product anyway. It takes really well to however sweet you like your frostings, because you can add a lot more sugar than I'm going to. And it'll still come out nice. So... I mean, I like it for that reason. Also, it's so simple, because it's just, there's no fancy techniques. Just whisking together butter and cream cheese, and then sugar. Of course, also preferably done in not a super hot kitchen. I don't know what you're smelling, though. There's no sugar in there yet, so. <laughs> Whisk it good. Do -do 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 -do. Crack? I can't crack a whisk. Do 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 do. Spin. It's not really a spin. I'm not beating the whisk. So I really want to replace whip with whisk in that song, but I'm coming up having difficulty coming up with an appropriate verb. I could just skip to the part where it's whisk it. Whisk it good. one Rube is always telling me when he can hear my breathing on stream <laughs> when I'm doing something especially active of course usually that's after Teo has redeemed a bunch of stuff And I still think I owe Teo a dessert. Because last time he's just like, random dessert generator. And I'm like, Teo, don't waste your points. I'm already sweating <laughs> from this whisking. So if your goal is just to make me sweat, mission accomplished. Oh my goodness, Teo. The reward system is broken, I guess. <laughs> I need to make the recipe redeems real cheap. The exercise redeems real expensive. Please tell me I didn't. I did. I did, of course I did. Through my 
scraper and the sink. And now I need it. And it can still be a little bit lumpy at this point, which is fine because as soon as you start adding in your sugar and things that are abrasive, that'll help it break down, get nice and smooth. I'm sure my cake is telling me it wants to be rotated. Although there's only one in there this time, there was two in yesterday. So I actually had to rotate it. Okay, so the secret that I learned to making this a really nice frosting to hold up on cupcakes and things is milk powder. It just gives it a little bit of structure and makes it less runny. So it'll pipe really nicely onto cupcakes. So if you're doing cupcakes, absolutely do this. If you're doing cake pops or not trying to make a structural frosting, it's not necessary at all. It does benefit from some extra time to hydrate though, for just that milk powder to get completely dissolved. So just bear that in mind. And I still haven't added any sugar. But I've got this nice open container of powdered sugar that I'm just going to add some into it. With the option of more, and I'm going to start off with the, the spatula just to get it worked in enough so that when I start whisking, it won't all just fly out and over my face. And of course, since I'm wearing a mostly black tank top right now, carrot cake. Okay. Something different. We like it. And I've been told that I make good carrot cake and I should shred some of this pineapple. It's a good call. I need to shred some of this pineapple for that carrot cake. And of course, that oven is just going to yell at me, telling me, you didn't flip me, you didn't to rotate me. Well, I've got convection on, so it should be less necessary. And there's only one cake in there, so I don't need to rotate the level, because you're right in the middle. get married and have as many children when we grow old and eat our children for nutrients. Yes! Italian stallion. Perfect. Damn it, Teo. What did I tell you? I'm going to take away your your rights, your push-up rights, if you keep making me do push-ups in the kitchen. Hands on the ground while doing baking. Not the best. So, you've been warned several times. You are not. Can't get away with that with someone who's met you. We're only at 20 and 20. Okay. Okay. Now is actually a good time because I should probably like mop the brow a little bit. I can do the push-ups now.
fashion business. Claim my clothes and resell them and make unlimited profit. Huh. I mean, <laughs> I feel like it'd be better if I had, like, fashionable clothes in the first place. But. And so you can see. that it holds a nice peak so it'll be nice for decorating it's still nice and smooth but we should taste it make sure yeah it's plenty sweet enough although I do want to add some citrus to it. Just for that bright flavor. And maybe if I knew where my if I knew where my white food coloring was, I'd add some of that. But since I don't, oh, I could just instead I could just add some orange extract instead. Okay. We're gonna do it that way. So I didn't add any vanilla or anything to this. There we go. That'll be nice. Let's check our cake. deep red cake over here. I do like that idea. I mean, if I could tame a lion, I would absolutely do this. If it were a magic lion that had uh, could open portals, even better. a little bit, give myself some working room. Hey, you gotta save yourself some points for other streams, goodness. Let's blow them all in a massive, glorious instant. Which would be more effective if you were making me do them all at once, but I can save them up. So. Thank you for the follow, Dian Stallion. Welcome in. Let me know what's your favorite baked good. I hope you're here long enough to get enough points to make me make it on stream. Free vacation. I see. I see. How's our timer doing? Looks like it's still in time. Apparently I didn't put enough cheese on. Goodness. Sixth time out of California. Okay. Now we gotta figure out how I'm doing this. Hmm. Can I get this cutting board out? And then get a cake board. Do you have any of the first 
I, I was gonna put it away. I don't know. Do whatever you're doing. I don't care. Do what you're doing. I'm not just not processing right now. Okay. I need to figure out how to make a shark. <laughs> this is my my goal. And I think honestly, if I just cut the cakes in half and build it up and be like the shark breaching the water. I think that's gonna be my best option. Cause I did a weird kind of thing last time, which did not work for me. So I think Once I separate these, come on, because I do need to get some height. So I think I'm just going to cut it right through the middle. Or maybe, maybe slightly off center. Maybe slightly off center. And do the two and then kind of make it the smaller halves on top so I can make like a layered effect. So maybe I do this. Make that the top layer. The top piece of it. Yeah. And I want to figure out these sizes now. This one's going to be smaller, more off center, less off center. And this is why I have a third cake, so I can figure it out as I go. But I do need my frosting, my bucket of frosting. Time to use every tool in the house. No going back now. And of course, this is why it's important that it's nice and cold, because if we tried to frost a warm cake, we would not be having a good time. Oh, and I almost forgot my special edition. So I'm going to kind of push this out to the side. Give myself a well in the middle. And put the next part of my <laughs> 69 hour cake into this. Rod! Hello, Rod. Speak of the shark. You are just in time. I am just starting to fill up a shark cake. I mentioned you at the beginning of the stream when I talked about the inspiration for this cake, which is my 69 hour slumber cake. Stop. Stop. <laughs> well, that's, 
Let's hope so. <laughs> I have very limited decorating abilities. But that's the goal. So now that you're here, Rod, I can tell the story again. If my husband would get, like, out of the way of everything. I know it's good. I made it. He says it's good, like he's surprised. So. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, no, I didn't. I don't know if I saw the, the paw cake. You should post a picture. Um, so this is the 69 hour cake because Monday night I roasted beets and those beets are why my cake is red. So it's a red velvet with beets. Um, so I hope you like beets. <laughs> um, oop. got my cannoli molds that I've never used. This is too big. And then, um, yesterday, I made plum jam. Oh, well, the, the cake won't taste like beets, but there should be a little hint. I should have honestly cut this piece out before I put it on the cake. I is a silly kitty. There we go. Okay. <laughs> and if you want just a little snack, here's a perfect little jam and cakey snack. But I have to tell my husband he can't eat it right now because I might need it. Anyway, and so then yesterday I baked cakes, and today I baked another cake, just in case I needed more cake, and we're decorating, and we're trying to come up with a shark, and now I need to make a little surprise to go inside. Have it off. Where's my other piece of cake? Is that it? That's it. Okay. The lid, yes. Kind of the lid. There's my surprise. We got sprinkles. And Gummy lobsters, cause you're you. He was hungry. So that's my my cake surprise. Oh come on, be nice to me for us. icing, frosting, stuff, goop, cake glue, cake glue. So I might not do jam on this layer because <laughs> I'm trying to keep my surprise in there. I didn't make a tall enough hole. I'm just running out of room. So I should... I don't need to do a smoother layer because I'm going to trim it. And 
Uh, does this fit on top? I think it does. And then I just am remembering that I wrote myself a note earlier to make some room in the fridge so I could chill this, and I definitely did not do that. So... <laughs> I also only put that plum jam on the bottom layer, which is the big layer. So that's the important one, right? It terrifies me also, but for you, Rod, <laughs> also please no expectations. Cause I don't want to, <laughs> what I know is that it tastes good. And that's what's important. I need to turn out my other cake. And Mark is making me some room. But I mean, the cake turns out so nicely. This is the real nailed it. I need to get it in there before Mark starts eating it. Okay, I'm going to put this in the fridge to firm up a little bit. And then I can trim it. But now I can actually work on my fondant. I need to dye my fondant black so I can make the back of the shark black to match Rod's colors. Oh, well, I was gonna, but apparently I have blue fondant. I can still put some black in it. <laughs> I thought it was white fondant. <laughs> I did not open it. I never checked. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> no, I'm not making fondant right now. Oh my goodness. Who do you think I am? Oh, it's also really hard. My goodness. Okay. I need to start start <laughs> just heating it in my hot little hands <laughs> unless it's just past its prime goodness could be <laughs> well I mean Rod that assumes I can even get it to roll out that's what I get for trying something new also, I guess it's old. <laughs> it might be two years old. So, maybe I am making some fondant. Because <laughs> this is... Okay. It does. It's okay. The other option is I can just color some of the frosting black and do the back half of the cake in black frosting. And then the front is white, and then I need to save some to be pink for your tank top. I also should go find like the reference picture I was using so I can at least try to <laughs> make it look halfway right. <laughs> oh no! Oh, the cookie cracked the floor? Oh my goodness. That is wild. That is too much cookie. <laughs> Hmm. 
Okay, well. Let's get some of this frosting out into a smaller bowl. And here I thought I'd made a whole lot of frosting. <laughs> I think I need a spoon is what I need. I'd also need my black food coloring if you want to get it out of there for me. In there. It's in a small jar. Small jar. Might be on the bottom layer bottom shelf. Or just let me in there and I'll find it. Oh, I see it. It's the one, right? Yes. Uh, it says black right on it. No, it's fine. Well, at least the frosting is good. We know this. That is just gray, so we need more. Well, I didn't do the whole thing. I had the the 69 hour part that I was prepping before, mostly as a joke to your stream from the other day. There we go. Yeah, better. That's dark enough, probably. Although it's darker on the camera than it is on the screen. It's dark gray. I do want it mostly black. I could also put some glitter in it. <laughs> there we go. Black frosting, haha. -ha. Okay. There's the pizza. Why are you in my way still? I can just put glitter on top when I'm done. Okay, so I need to. Get this nice and leveled that way. I kind of want to trim it this way to make it a. Need to get another bowl in which to put cake scraps. Need a bigger bowl. Cake scrap bowl. I just have no counter space. It's fine.
cutting the butt off because I want it to be kind of a kind of a rounded shape. Oh no! And I don't want to get into the sprinkles. Oh no! I'm losing integrity. Okay, well, we're going to be fine. Going to be fine. You know, cut off a little on the side so I can build you some arms. Okay. I need more towels. More towel racks in this kitchen. Okay. Now, maybe I made too much of my frosting black. I still need enough to make a shirt. Should to outlet. What? I have a whole thing of water over here. Sides coated. And honestly, the only part that has to stay white is just the front, the pectoral area. Which isn't actually that much, because part of it is going to theoretically be covered with shirt. Although I might run out of <laughs> ability at that point. Honestly, I could probably just like mush some cake together to make the shirt since it's already red. Or just make some more frosting. I have more ingredients. I thought I was going to have plenty of frosting. There's a cranny, a cranny back there that needs frosting. Okay, back in the fridge. I kind of want to just transfer that to a smaller bowl now, just so I don't have this whole bowl on the counter taking up space. So I'm running out of tools. The 
consoles will show me how much frosting I have left because I thought I was pretty low. But it's such a big bowl that even like a thin layer on the whole bowl is a decent amount of frosting. That's still a fair amount. Goodness. My whole sink is full. Full! Okay. Of course, I can taste it. It's over. Oh, there was my other utensil, too. Ha <laughs> ha! Silly me. Have a little taste. See if it's good. <laughs> Marker of that. Jeez. Hmm. moist. It's supposed to be. You can, you can, you know what you can do. <laughs> I didn't end up using much of this jam. There's some jam at the bottom layer. I wanted to make it more bloody when I cut into it, but... I guess that's not happening. The jam is really good. Ooh, jam is really good. Not to toot my own horn, but to toot. Of course, my problem is I don't exactly know how to give it a shark expression. <laughs> I'm still working on that. I guess I'm going to put the eyeballs on the front. Maybe I'll get like a piping bag out for it. I'm not quite sure. Not quite sure. We'll muddle through. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I bought you bread at the store today. If we had bread. I should be, I should be mixing this into cake pop consistency, so I can give you some arms. <laughs> Faria is a local bakery out here. They're really good. We have a couple really good local bakeries. Eighty five bakery? I don't think there's any 85s near us. There might be one. No, no one said Teo. <laughs> I mean, if Teo's here, I should be doing squats as I fondle my cake. gooey. Try 
trying to clean up as I go, but <laughs> it's like literally impossible. I'm just running out of places to put things. Okay. I should honestly have like found a place in the freezer for this. Don't tell Emil, he's gonna tell me I need a blast chiller again. Okay. Let's build some shoulders. Some shark shoulders. We do not need a blast chiller, Mark. So silly. Just put this arm on. If I was uh, a little more talented, I could make a fin to go with this too. Maybe I can. I don't know. I would need a dowel. I definitely need a dowel if I'm going to try to put a fin on here. Do we have any dowels? don't have any of those giant straws. The boba straws. That's what I really need. I kind of want to try it. Put a fin on the back. I guess I could just leave it against the ground so it's like you're breaching. Now the key becomes how do I frost this? <laughs> that is the trick. These are not fins, these are shoulders. Okay, now we try to get black frosting on this. Although honestly, it's already going better <laughs> than last time. Last time was a mess. It was... It was not good. <laughs> the goal is to... Yeah. I mean, I've already accomplished the main goal, which is just to get it tasting good. Now we try to frost. I mean, the Kirby cake was so much easier because it was just a flat circle and I could just make the whole thing pink. It was much simpler. This whole... 3D kind of stuff. See, this is why I originally planned to do fondant, because I just could have rolled it out and flopped it right on top. It's only one fin mark. The side ones are shoulders. Because I need somewhere to put Rod's tank top. No! 
Gaps! Let's just rotate the whole board. <laughs> there we go. You can kind of see. It's coming along. Gotta get it in all the little nooks and crannies. Can you imagine people do this for a living and they do it under time pressure? On like competitions? Like, just doing the baking part? Not a problem. This part? <laughs> If I was under a time clock, yeah. <laughs> On a competition show, I would have had non-expired fondant. Well, I mean, I think, I think my main reason for not doing this as a job is I could not make, like, a good living off of it. I work a good job. It's comfortable. And it funds hobbies. This is definitely hobby area. Okay, how do I get you? How do I get the back of your? How do I get the back of your hit your top fin? Come on, it's evolving as we go. also makes what people do on cooking shows like so much more impressive with how quickly they can knock stuff out like this Um, it's not bad. It's not bad to work with, especially if you have fresh ones. Um, when I made it, even when I made it, my marshmallows were a little stale, so it was difficult. And I didn't have any powdered sugar, so I was trying to make powdered sugar out of granulated sugar and cornstarch in the food processor. And of course, it was a little bit grainy. Um, but honestly, it worked better than it had any right to. And it rolled out really nicely. Uh, when I used the stuff that came in the nailed it box, it um, that was really easy to work with. Still need to do that side a little bit, even myself out, cover up your 
gooey insides. But to make fondant at home, all you need is marshmallows and powdered sugar and cornstarch. And you just melt the marshmallows and work powdered sugar into it until it's the right consistency. Or of course you can just buy it at like a craft store. Just don't wait two years to use it and expect it to be nice and soft <laughs> and pliable for you. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> oh no! There was a naked spot on your fin. I don't want you to have any injuries until I like specifically cut into you. Okay, well, how's it looking so far? Yeah. Hmm. Kind of sharky. He needs. I didn't quite get enough point on the on the top, but we're still getting there. Okay, let that firm up a little bit and take a breathe. Take a breathing break. Oof. Knock out some of those squats. Because I still owe Teo 30 squats. go. Oh, I should flex my legs. I just did a bunch of squats. So pale. Oh my goodness. Rah. Rah. <laughs> okay, what was I doing? Getting some water. Do I have anything yellow? You have yellow eyes. And white eyebrows. I guess I should have made the... <laughs> should have made the, the black come down onto the face a little bit more. But since the fin is back, you're like, your head's going to be tilted back. That's my excuse. Maybe the mouth is on top. I could just carve out a little bit of mouth and then the red cake inside will look like red mouth. So that's good. I wish I had some like, the original video I saw where someone did this, the person had um, white candy melts and they used those to make a bunch of teeth, teeths.
real question. Is how am I going to get this tank top on here? Disappearing. Sort of spread it out. So you can airbrush white fondant, or you can just put food coloring and and um, knead it into your fondant. So your fondant can actually turn whatever color, or you can just do white and airbrush it. So it really depends on what sort of texture you're going for, and how much time and materials you have. Because obviously, if you don't have an airbrush, you can't airbrush. And if, since I don't have an airbrush and I don't have the artistic ability to back up like an airbrush, <laughs> um, so I'd kind of never go that direction anyway. Um, kind of want to get out a piping bag for the pink, because then I can actually place it where I want it, and I so seldom use piping bags. I could actually get out a, um, like a peanut butter cup and cut that in half and use the peanut butter part as like your eyes. That would be close to the right color. See if I can do this the way Professor Mendel did it. I'm a little bit scared. I've seen people do it before, but you gotta twist up the back and then <laughs> and that gets it gets the frosting down into the tip of your bag, <laughs> and it's fun. Oh my goodness. I love it. That was amazing. I wasn't sure if it would work with this because, I mean, she was doing it with royal icing, so it was much looser. But that worked to treat. <laughs> I'm excited. Okay, good thing I bought peanut butter cups today. If I could only open them. Oh, that's why I can't open them little latchy thing. Okay. Okay. So we've got peanut butter cups. And I'm just going to cut them. And kind of stick them in and maybe put like a little dot of black frosting on for a pupil. That'll work. I probably could have used the uh, bottom half, but I needed some taste control, didn't I? There we go. We've got eyes. Love it. gotten there. I really wish I had like five times this much counter space. Got a 
figure out what I did with my kitchen scissors. There we go. I knew I put them somewhere where I wouldn't lose them. I know I was talking. <laughs> Hawk was saying that the other day. And when we do reorg, when we do, well, have the time and ability and the not worrying about contractors being in the house, the this counter where the camera's sitting on is going to get lowered to the same level as this. So we'll have twice the area that's usable. And then there'll be a, count, a cabinet underneath there where we can put all like the extra stuff that isn't used every day. So like the flowers we have back here, um, the salt, some of the utensils, the mixer, it'd be great. But of course, need to have that. I mean, haven't been thinking about contractors getting in the house lately for reasons. Okay, so let's try to give you a tank top. <laughs> That is, let's just make that a little thicker. So the tank top's not going to go around your entire back. <laughs> it's okay. It'll be half off, just the way Hawk likes it. kind of have room to take it farther down. I made too much pink. thicker, give the illusion of some depth. And I think I've got a, another smaller palette knife somewhere, or at least I thought I did. I wish I did. Well, I guess I am using this one to get the black frosting off of it. So the idea is that the cake is a shark. Well, a shark orca hybrid. But, I mean, I, I'm not quite talented enough to make that detail, that level of detail. So if I can get it to be looking like a 
marine animal, I'm going to be pretty satisfied. But there, look! Rod! You've got a tank top! <laughs> okay. So, I need to, like, carve out a mouth, and I'm going to get a small knife for that. I should have done this before I put on the tank top because I'm going to get crumbs in places. Although maybe I'll just do a line of, like, no, I don't have any black, so. I'm gonna get a toothpick for this. <laughs> There's no other way. No other way. Unless I had like a little tiny piping bags. Doesn't look quite right in the perspective without like a nose, but <laughs> force perspective. Right. I think I can't do anything else to it without it making it worse. So I'm going to call that good and hope you like it, Rod. <laughs> and I'm glad you're here to enjoy it firsthand. Let me smooth out the... I can actually smooth out the tank top strap a little bit. Okay. We ready? You ready? It's <laughs> your your fin is back there, but <laughs> right nailed it for sure. Um. So, here, <laughs> and I wish I'd, I'd built up the head a little bit. It's a little flat on top, which <laughs> didn't occur to me until after it was, like, mostly done. Um, but he looks like he's falling asleep, because that's appropriate, because it's slumber. This is my 69-hour slumber beat red velvet. <laughs> and I really wish y'all were here to eat this with me. Because no matter what it looks like, 
I will post pictures to your Discord. Absolutely. It does taste real good. Yeah, I'm I'm laughing at my my attempts of art. Um, still couldn't make it on nailed it because it, it tastes real good. <laughs> it's just the decoration that is slightly questionable. So, with that, I am going to have... You want an eyepiece? Perfect. I will pass the slices out everywhere. Um, I'm going to call that, because it's time for me to eat dinner. I'm going to go have a piece of that pizza, which is delicious also, I assume, because Mark kept eating it. And let's go find someone to raid. Let's see. Oh, we can go raid Resdra. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for <laughs> hanging out and <laughs> giving me your approval <laughs> of the cake, because that makes me feel real good, too. Um, let's go see Resdra. Resdra is playing some Dead by Daylight, which I will probably do a little bit later tonight, too. Um, we've got a raid message. We've got a sub raid message also, thanks to the lovely Robo. Uh, don't mind the typeouts, because the bot does not have a membership. But if you are. Oh, shit. Well, <laughs> Gil. Gil, I was just wrapping up. Oh, my goodness. Hello. Hello, Gil. Hello, Gil's community. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't rap, apparently. I have nothing else to do. I'm done. Okay, okay. I can show you what I made before. Bake more. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, my goodness. Oh, hello, Weasel. Hello, Evan. Hello, Spiff. Oh, my goodness. And more squats to do. So, I can. Uh... I'm doing it on one leg, if that wasn't obvious. Right? So many good beans that came into the stream. So I will show you what we did today on stream. We made some lovely focaccia Denver style pizza. Hmm? Destroyed? What happened? Oh, whoops. I had already... <laughs> I had already typed raid. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I didn't cancel it. I didn't know I had to cancel it. Me. Okay. How 
How's it going? Anyone that's new here, welcome in. This is Comfy Strap. Hey, my name is Raz. 